Welcome to the Ghost Swan Channel. There are some pieces of art, be it movies, TV shows, paintings, whatever, that upon first experiencing them, embed themselves into your very existence. The innate sense that whatever you're experiencing at that moment is more than just a movie or song or TV show. It's the feeling I had when I first read Norwegian Wood. That book spoke to me in a way no other work really had in a long time. Murakami's words pierced my heart, his characters felt incredibly real, and it cemented that book as one of the best of all time in my mind. I had the same feeling when I first read Meredith Grand's Octopus Pie, a biting representation of the life of a generation I wasn't living in, in a suburban environment I personally would never really be in. They were all good, they were all amazing, but something about them was just magical to me. They all had this spark, this X factor. And that same feeling struck me when I heard American football's never meant for the first time. But before I get exactly into why that is, let's take a step back. If you know anything about capital E emo, the name Kinsella should ring a bell. And if it doesn't, here's a quick refresher. The Kinsella brothers, namely Mike, Nate, and Tim, are the core members behind some of the second emo wave's most prominent and iconic acts. This revolving core lineup would swap members in and out between projects like Cap'n Jazz, Joan of Arc, and Howls. But after Cap'n Jazz's initial 1989 to 1995 run came to an end, Mike Kinsella was left without a band once again. It would be another few years before he would release anything with any project in general, and that would be in the form of his most iconic project to date. If you're not like a Cap'n Jazz stan who loves an analphabetology or whatever, you know, don't don't at me. I, I like I like I like Cap'n Jazz, okay? I just I don't think it's the most iconic. 1999 self-titled record American Football was far from a smash hit. Really nothing any of the Kinsellas would ever make could be called a hit, like a radio hit. But at 20 years old, fresh out of his teens, Mike did manage to make one of the most beautifully vulnerable records of all time. And the first track on that album would be the one, the only, never meant. Meant feels like the thesis statement for Ampho LP1. That feeling is fitting, it being the open track and all. It sets the tone for the rest of the record to come and feels like a kind of, this is where we are now for emo as a whole. But none of that says much about the song itself. So let's take a closer look at the lyrics. The lyrics are kinda sparse. I think there are in total less than 20 unique lines. And when I say that, I mean unique sentences. And all those lines are spaced out a lot in the actual song, giving each line room to breathe and impress itself upon your psyche. And impress themselves they do. The song drives home this point of a man seemingly still getting over a relationship he saw as incredibly important. One that meant the world to him, and also seemingly to the other person, but also one that inevitably went wrong. Specifically the songs about suppressing and hiding the feelings that come with that about hiding away how hurt the breakup truly made him feel and pretending that none of it really happened. That's what Never Meant is really about. In 2001, two years after American Football's seminal debut and their subsequent breakup, Mike Kinsella formed his solo project. Owen is a project near and dear to not only Mike's heart, but also mine. Mike Kinsella's writing under the Owen moniker has had an immense level of influence upon my own musical style. From the arpeggiated and twinkly but driving acoustic melodies, to the lush instrumentation, and the tell-all but intimate style of lyricism, his music means everything to me. But, back to the topic. While Kinsella was already a great and prolific songwriter by this point, it did take him some time to find his own sound. His self-titled debut is good, but feels somewhat generically indie folk and lacks his own distinct voice. Riffs feel less unique, strummed chords are more present and in the forefront of the mix, 
and the composition is still not fully there. In my opinion, it would take until 2002's No Good For No One Now for him to truly find his musical identity. In 2004, however, Owen would release a split EP with then newbies to the scene, The Ruta Vega. Before this split, Mike would create a reprised version of his 1999 classic, and it's very interesting. Hello? The 1999 version of the song has this clean electric guitar composition. Guitar lines are layered over each other, filling up the song with this melancholic texture, while the steady drum line keeps the rhythm driving forward. The vocal lines kind of hover in that nostalgic haze, unresolved and unfinished, undone and unfocused. The 2004 version of Never Meant is immensely stripped down compared to the original. The main two instruments are a stripped down version of the original riff played on an acoustic guitar and this droning steel guitar that's mainly used for texture. The entire track stays in this soft, quiet valley of sound, never really rising to fill the entire audio spectrum like the original did, outside of some very specific moments. On top of that, Mike's voice has truly grown into his own by this point. Back in 1999, I feel Mike didn't really sound like himself yet. His voice still rang hollow, the recognizable timbre that would later become his signature in his Owen days is still missing. In this version, his voice is definitely there. He sounds older, more mature and reflexive. And all of that loops back into the major difference between this version and the original. 1999's version of Never Meant is an anthem of pubescence pre-college but post-high school heartbreak and sadness. It's Mike trying to seem grown up and smart in the face of it, trying to deflect the sadness by pretending it never happened. It's what a teen boy thinks maturity and moving on is supposed to be. 2004's version of Never Meant is about reflecting on that relationship already having grown from it, about embracing that it happened, and vowing to remember the good, and learn from the bad. It's a true reprise of the original, and it's a perfect song. And that, everyone, was Never Meant. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, this was the Goose One channel, and I'll see you all the next time. Every time I come